Hi folks, welcome to episode 14 of the Epochs of the Lotus Eaters. I'm joined by Bo, and today we're going to be talking about a Roman Emperor I actually don't know very much about, I'm going to be honest. Uh, he's, Domitian is not one of those emperors that I've spent a lot of time studying, and so preparing for this I had a quick look uh, over his Wikipedia page to see what I was missing, and man, I feel like I should have done more work into Domitian because he sounds like a very interesting fellow. <laughs> Interesting's one word, I suppose. I, it is, it is one word. I mean, he's known as one of the bad ones, although he's not, as he does have some redeeming features, mm. and we can talk about maybe how his memory has been... Um, Damned. Yeah. So who, who considered him to be bad? Well, Tacitus. Right. Um, so the main sources we have really are Tacitus, although he doesn't talk directly about him all that much because uh, Tacitus's uh, annals and history are both fragmentary, right. and the bits about... Domitian aren't really intact but we've got all of Suetonius Suetonius wrote the 12 Caesars mm -hmm. and Domitian is the last of those 12 so we've got a full life right, right. For Su from Suetonius so. right and uh, and so I I understand it that he was popular with the people but not with the senate because essentially the the thing that stri uh, strikes me from it is the the fact that he seemed to have overridden the senate's authority entirely <laughs> yeah is a way of understating it. Uh, yeah, yeah. He was very unpopular with the, the nobility. I mean, well, it was part of how he... So to put it in some context, he's the mm -hmm. second son of Vespasian. And where we talked about in the other uh, Epochs episodes, the year of the four emperors, 69 mm -hmm. AD, that ends with Vespasian in 70 AD. He was a military ruler. Mm -hmm. So he's really done away with Augustus's principate, sort of, largely. It's no... There's no... Even though Augustus and his heirs uh, were warlords, <laughs> they were still on paper. They were supposed to be. It was. They were supposed to be ruling by consent. Mm. They were still supposed they were meant to, be, to be first citizens. Exactly. They, yeah. yeah. Not exactly emperors or kings, mm. but merely the princeps. Uh, yeah. The yeah. first among citizens. Yeah. Kind of thing. But, um, uh, is it, is Domitian the first person to change this? Because I understand that he essentially declared himself like the god emperor of Rome. Yeah, yeah. So basically, so where Vespasian sort of does away with really the last vestiges of the Republic, yeah. where people can still sort of claim we might be heading back to a Republic one day soon, maybe. Yeah. Uh, Vespasian is just the end of that. We're just military rulers now. Right. And his son, Titus, who's supposed to be one of the extremely good emperors, mm -hmm. uh, only lasts for a couple of years. And then... And then he dies childless, and it passes to his younger brother, this Domitian, mm -hmm. who rules for quite a while. Is it sort of 14 years or 16 years? Quite a while. And, um, yeah, he's despotic. He's not quite as crazy as Caligula or Nero, or nowhere near, actually. <laughs> uh, but he is he is a baddie. <laughs> you know, he's one of the bad oh, okay, ones okay. because the, he in, introduces all sorts of... Um, all, all, all sorts of extortions that he brings in and murders, political murders. Right. Um, and also sort of the, brings in a society of sort of informers uh, where people have to inform. Or there's lots of censorship. Right. That's why I thought it might be uh, apt or poignant for us today mm. uh, because Tac Tacitus lived through the age of Domitian. Right. He right, 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 he he rises to extreme prominence and power just after Domitian, but his early career would have been during Domitian. He was a senator during the days of Domitian. So he describes a lot about what it's like to live under a, a censorious tyranny. Right, okay. Uh, well, we know so, all about that these days. Yeah. So, so Tacitus's, Tacitus's writings become um, prescient again, I think. Okay, so where, where to begin with Domitian then? Well, maybe just start with sort of his early life or maybe a bit about Vespasian and Titus. So uh, Vespasian was obviously a, a bit of a cliche or a trope to say, but a great man mm. in the sense that it was this individual personality that sort of rose up through the ranks. And he wasn't fantastically rich or aristocratic. He was mm -hmm. kind of, they weren't from from nothing at all yeah. but um so for example there's a line in suetonius so most of the f quotes in this first bit we taken from suetonius um it says most people agree that domitian spent a poverty-stricken and rather degraded youth without even silver on the family table oh god he must have been in dire straits uh, yeah <laughs> doesn't even have the family silverware yeah yeah so that's sort of uncommon though for sort of a prince well he wasn't a prince to begin with yeah. his father was simply an important soldier no sure. more than that but then he became the emperor right? it, but in the end yeah. became emperor so that's unusual from the age of augustus onwards you would have, wouldn't have had roman princes that wouldn't mm. have born it, to the purple exactly 
exactly. Yeah. yeah. So to have a poverty stricken childhood is rare. But maybe mm. it's an interesting point to say that we talked about how perhaps Caligula or Nero, if you were raised in, in extremely opulent fashion, um, it lends itself to having no perspective on life mm. and people and money. Well, even Domitian, it seems, uh, didn't really help that he came from humble beginnings. Um, but as I say, he's not as bad as, as those. Um, but we yeah. can get into that exactly. Another thing from his childhood, which I think is really important, and I do this on a fair few of my videos, um, is talk about a little bit of sort of psychology, the arms, armchair psychology. Mm -hmm. But sometimes there's something in someone's childhood or early life that's so pivotal that it's, yeah. it seems silly to ignore it. Yeah. Um, so where we talked about that Vespasian took over from Vitellius during the year of the mm -hmm. four emperors, it wasn't completely smooth. <laughs> Vitellius just didn't completely give in. <clears throat> there was backwards and forwards. There was b battles and fighting yeah. and street battles and things. Anyway, Domitian, when he was a, a boy or a teenager, uh, was sort of hunted down by Vitellius's men at one point. Right, uh, okay. Vespasian and Titus were out in the east gathering yeah. their forces, but Domitian, as a, a younger, much younger man, like a teenager, uh, was still sort of having his education in Rome. And so at one point, Vitellius's right. faction come for him in the palace um, or somewhere, and he has to... he hides a couple of times like completely for his life if they yeah, yeah. caught him he would definitely have been killed and at one point he has to sort of flee across the Tiber and then he's hidden in the house of some peasant woman and even though Vitellius's troops come in and apparently search it from from cellar to yeah. uh, to rafters somehow they don't find him Oof. just uh, luckily against the odds he's somehow so anyway uh, and he goes well, on that must he... have been terrifying right, right. right. that must have been absolutely right. especially if you're a teenager Mm. And just it's my dad's doing something, and now there are men hunting me, which is something that happened a lot in the old world, you know, in the old in the old days. Mm. But anyway, well, I can think of other examples where that happened mm. to people, and um, yeah, it, it makes for quite a, sort of a serious adult. You know, there's no mm. like your childhood. There's no time for childish things; they have to mm. be put aside. And you have to grow up quite fast, it and probably like become. Um, uh, well, you'd be a much more brutal person than someone alive today that that didn't happen to. <laughs> well, you yeah. know, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you'd no, be no, much absolutely. more inclined to just be off with their heads because you know it nearly happened to you. Um, well, yeah, kind I mean, of thing. This, this is the game, and this is how it's played, and it's been played since I was a child. I think so. if um, William the Conqueror, when he was a small child, he had to be sort of spirited away yep. a couple of times uh, because people were trying to murder him. Well, I mean, what kind of psychology does that make for you know? well it's it's fundamentally um, machiavelli machiavelli's dictum when it comes to hereditary politics isn't it you know uh, as machiavelli wrote in the prince if you're going to take somewhere over you've got to not only kill the ruling prince but also his entire family so that resistance can't form around them and that was a truism of the ancient world and and not even the ancient world of just hereditary politics that's always going to be the case but uh, anyway so, um, yeah, escapes. yeah. Well, there's one bit um, because apparently Vespasian, or everyone knew that Domitian was um, sort of not really cut out for the role. Right. Um, he was just known as dissolute or, or um, sort of even cruel, even in yeah. early life. Or rather, his older brother Titus was, um, if you believe the accounts, is like the shining paragon of virtue. Is so much so that you think uh, you know it's been exaggerated. Mm for sort of literary effect uh, but Titus is supposed to be unless you're Jewish because he burnt down Jerusalem um, <laughs> unless you're Jewish everyone thought of him as just this great great guy brilliant yeah. in every possible way uh, really well read a great general etc etc yeah. um, and so it was clear to Vespasian who reached the purple relatively old I mean he still ruled for quite a while himself about mm. 10 years but it was obvious that Titus was going to take over yeah. um, and uh, Tacitus gives us a great speech he puts a great speech into the mouth of, mouth of Titus where he talks about how families the most most important thing it's just a really nice good speech that a great leader a good person would make mm. and it's to juxtapose it really to Domitian how he's just not that he's sort of cruel and, and venal right. um, rotten really um, corrupt um, but th well there's one line that's towards the end in Suetonius but it, it's it's I think I think it says a lot about at least the Roman conception a generation or two after about Domitian, if not the actual reality of the man. Um, it says, on his accession, Domitian boasted to the Senate of having himself conferred the imperial power on Vespasian and Titus. It had now merely returned to him. What does that mean? <laughs> 
well, it's just, well, it's just complete ego, isn't it? It's just well, complete yeah. arrogance. It's that I was always the rule. I was always the best of us three. Yeah. So, uh, but so yeah, but obviously yeah, not. Yeah, I mean, it's just that's bizarre. His own father and older brother, and somehow he was responsible for that. It's a weird ego thing. So, it's okay. one of those things. I think people have. Some people have. Um, uh, well, you know, Nero had a massive golden statue of himself, a colossus, mm -hmm. a golden colossus yeah, of himself. Very modest man. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's that type of ego, isn't there, where you just cannot, people just will not stand anyone else being above them yeah. on any level ever. Uh, yeah, they'll even rewrite history. Mm. Um, so that isn't the case. And this appears to be Domitian. Yeah, yeah. That, Domitian's are sort of uh, uh, on that level, yeah. I think. Um yeah, okay. so that's one thing. Um, well, another line, I think, from Suetonius, which is telling, um, is it says that at the beginning of his reign, Domitian would spend hours alone every day doing nothing more than catching flyers and stabbing them with, needle, with a needle-sharp pen. Is so that you, true or is that propaganda? Well, well, well good question. I mean, Excellent uh, yeah, question. Because, you know, I, I, as um, someone who's not like particularly biased in any way you know in, in either or against i would put that down to probably not being true because i mean at the beginning of your reign that's when you've got to settle everything and get everything in order i don't think you've got hours a day to just spend viciously torturing flies <laughs> like i mean it's a weird story it is a weird story and i'm not but i'm not saying he didn't do it or anything i'm just saying oh, he's got no. authors writing about him who definitely don't like him that's true, that's true. I mean, Suetonius and Tacitus are writing in the age of sort of Nerva, Trajan, Hadrian times, mm. so about a generation after this. Yeah. So it is in their interest, really, to paint him as bad, but not entirely. They don't have to. Mm. I mean, they both mention some of his good points. Mm, okay. Um, but there is certainly an element to that, and you yeah. absolutely but, keep that in mind. But, I mean, that, that, uh, uh, conversely, to refute myself, that is such a strange and specific story. That's what I was going to say. That it, yeah, it, it's, it's hard to think that someone just made that up and they're like, oh, I'll slip that in there and everyone will believe it. That's a thing actually that modern scholars, modern historians say a lot, that if when something's really specific like that, it just yeah. does give it a lot more weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Which I think it possibly can, yeah. but not always. No, in it always. The other thing is later, quite often, more than once, there's lines where he's. it says that he just spends loads of time on his own all day, every day. That, that's just one of his things. Sounds nice. Uh, yeah. yeah <laughs> As not, someone who gets zero time alone, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> and the other thing is that the, obviously the Roman um, bureaucracy is extremely advanced by now. So you could have someone like Caligula who really did hardly any business of government mm. and things still tick over. The provinces mm. and the army still all ticks over. I mean, it's probably so it's best not like for everyone, a, isn't it? A prime minister now where you have to be working yeah. a lot otherwise things yeah um well anyway that yeah. bear, bear that in mind as well yeah okay um Good. but it, th there was an anecdote there oh i won't go on about the fly thing but um just the idea that you i mean it's, a, it's obviously a bit weird when yeah. kids pull the spider uh, legs off spiders and things yeah. um uh, but to carry that on into your adulthood is definitely weird and then to um, become the emperor of the Roman Empire and have that kind of mentality, right. not good news, is it? Right, yeah. yeah. It just suggests yeah. that his mind isn't completely... Yeah, it's hard to see someone like good. Trajan doing that, isn't it? <laughs> right, you yeah. Know, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just, just weird, that's all. Um, there's one tr trope, might be the way of saying it, in ancient historians mm. when they write about these biographies, um, is that quite often they want to present them as being good to begin with and then later slide into mm. vice. Mm. Um, the biographies of Nero are, are most obviously that. They say he was good up until a few years and then suddenly was bad or pro pro progressively got bad. And they do the same with Domitian. Um, they just say that he's, um, he, he was in... He had lots of virtues and vices, but just his vices sort of s steadily got worse. Hmm. Um, it, like his natural inclinations were not all that bad, uh, but a, a lack of funds made him greedy and fear of, fear of assassination made him cruel. Hmm. Um, I mean, that's believable as well. Yeah. Yeah. Totally believable. Yeah. There were definitely um, loads of uh, assassination plots against him. Um yeah, just because you haven't been assassinated yet, it doesn't, doesn't mean, mean yeah, yeah, <laughs> there aren't people getting, out yeah. there. It doesn't mean it, that there aren't definitely real assassins. To watch the full video, please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com.